Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Music Den. I am, of course, your host, Armando Venditti, and I am joined today by a very special guest, Mr. Bill Schuster. How you doing, Bill? Good, good, good. How you doing? I'm oh, doing all right for a Friday as we're taping this. Doing good. Beautiful day here, nice and warm and sunny. Yes. Smoke from the fires has actually disappeared. So, you know. So should it's so nice we should be uh, recording this outside but then uh, on my end we'd hear even more birds than the occasional squawk from duke over here no i know i know that's fine that's fine no i mean um no it's, it's a beautiful day um so ladies and gentlemen we have a very special treat we are going to be doing a few i'd say a few episodes today um and bill's wife stacy is going to be joining us at the very end for a ranking of um, ranking the albums of Pink, but for this episode, for this one right now, right here and now, we're going to be doing a ranking of the albums of One Group Super Tramp. Um, <clears throat> uh, specifically, you know they've had a long career, even though they're defunct as of right now. They've stopped. Uh, I believe they disbanded in two thousand fifteen. Well, for the purposes of this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to rank the top five albums from 1974 to 1983. I'm just going to say two, but it's 1983. This period of time, from 74 to 83, was considered to be their peak, commercially and critically. Again, that's up to interpretation, but... That's what we decided to do. So you know what? If you don't like it, sue us. You know what I mean? It's the way it is. Don't get much. <laughs> My middle name is Protection Overdraft. Okay, like bank over you know, overdraft protection kind of a thing. So um, what we're going to do is again we're going we have five um, five albums. I got to bring up my list here. Excuse me. Uh, five albums from the years of 1974 to 1983. And I'm going to let my co-host here go first. Thank you, Armando. Uh, yeah, my my five and four, I struggled trying to decide who was going to be picked last for the team here. And mm -hmm. It's probably not going to surprise a lot of people, but it definitely doesn't say anything negative about this album because I have always really liked this album quite a bit. And that is, of mm -hmm. course, the last with Roger Hodgson, famous last words. Mm -hmm. I find this to be a, a strong, consistent album. Uh, really, it, at Roger especially. He's got five of the nine songs, and he just has some outstanding songs. Uh, Say Le Bon is one of my favorite Supertramp songs ever. Uh, Rick, his fare on this is more lightweight other than Waiting So Long, which is pretty dark and heavy and somber and quite good. But I really like his, like, put on your old brown shoes, Bonnie, and and uh, My Kind of Lady. They're just all fun, good, strong Rick songs. And there's nothing wrong with that. They they sound great. They've got the usual contrast between Rick and Roger, which is what made Super Tramp, frankly. Mm -hmm. it was yeah. Never the same after. Uh, but, yeah, this album kind of gets crapped on a lot, and I completely disagree. A lot of people seem to uh, also uh, retroactively hate on It's Raining Again, but that was a top 10 hit here in the States. Mm -hmm. Nobody was hating on it much at the time. So mm -hmm. I think that's one of those revisionist history. It's cool to uh, not like It's Raining Again, but no, nah, it's a great catchy, uh, one of those just upbeat songs that Roger excels at. So, yeah. yeah. Famous Last Words is number five. Good pick. Um, yeah, this is starting out pretty strong here. No. Um, yeah, no, it's a good album. It's a good album. Um, we actually, well, I mean, growing up with three sisters, music was always on in the house. I've said this before. And uh, I remember my sister, uh, one of my sisters, buying uh, the single um, It's Raining Again. And Bonnie was the flip side. Right? So, I mean... I've always liked that song. That's that's actually one of my favorites off that album. Good. Um, 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, we must continue. Um, <laughs> coming in at number five for me is Crisis What Crisis. I'm probably going to get, you know, kicked in the head metaphor, you know, figuratively <laughs> for doing this. But it is Crisis What Crisis, released in 75, um, produced by Ken Scott, who also produced Crime of the Century. Um, this was at a point where the, the band were basically, it was like crunch time for the band because they were touring uh, um, for um, Crime of the Century and they were they didn't really have any ideas for songs. So it was between Roger Hudson and Rick Davies to write the music. And the music on the album is good. I mean, it's a good album. It's just, it just seems a bit, the tracks seem a bit unfinished to me. I mean, you've got songs like um, <clears throat> Sister Moonshine, um, Ain't Nobody But Me. You know, these are classics, you know, looking back, right? I mean, they were pretty much classics like after a year after it came out, because I mean, you know, I mean, everyone knew these songs. Um, you have also um, a Soapbox Opera, Another Man's Woman, uh, Two of Us, um, which I first heard on uh, the live album Paris. You know, um, I just, I don't know. I, I, it's just an album that I really, I don't go back to. And uh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Thank you for the prop. Um, again, all my props are in the basement, ladies and gentlemen. So, and um, footnote: if you guys out there can get your ha hot little hands on a copy of the reissue of Live in Paris '79 on CD, do it because it is one of the best uh, live-sounding albums I've ever heard in my life, and that even includes Queen. There you go. I have that as well. The the same show for it. that's uh, yeah 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 i agree it's very good yeah it's sonically it is one of the best sounding live albums i've ever heard in my life and again like i said that's even trumping queen live killers and any any album live album that queen has released as much as i love queen this trumps that so it says a lot for a big mouth like me to say that so <laughs> so yeah um yeah, I mean, putting this list together, guys, just really quickly was was. I knew what my number one was going to be, though. But um, the the rest was kind of like a bit of a toss up, right? But this one, yeah, number five. Sorry, I think this just didn't click with me at all. So got to put them somewhere. Yeah, no, sure enough. All right, coming in at number four for you. <laughs> all right. This is where I get the head shaking in the audience, especially because uh, I considered making this number five. Uh, it's uh, the best-selling album in the world for 1979. I knew it. Breakfast in America. I knew it's, it. Yeah. This is a very unbalanced album to me. I mean, I, I love it. I'm a Super Tramp fan, I, but it seems top-heavy with... Uh, the songs that got all the radio play stuff like goodbye stranger the logical song take the long way home child division these songs are some of the best songs super tramp ever did yeah but some of the deeper cuts on here while there are definitely some good ones some of them are just kind of they don't like match up to how good some of the rest of the album is and that takes away from my listening experience if i want to listen start to finish this is probably out of all these top five albums, the one I least want to listen to as an album. I'd prefer to pick out songs and play them on a shuffle in one of my custom playlists or something. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not take away from their accomplishment, obviously best selling album in the world for yeah. that year. That's quite impressive. Who would have thought super tramp would have ever, ever been able to do that. Yeah. 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 So kudos to them for that. I'm sure. Uh, Rick and Roger are still living on royalties. Damn right they are. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so that is my number four. Yeah. Um, it, it's funny because, I mean, I, I was thinking about doing, um, well, I've, I've started to do a series, um, again, a series, 
um, on uh, albums that were either uh, misguided or misunderstood. And um, in the, the the term under um, underrated could could also fit under that umbrella kind of a thing. Um, and I, um, I tend to think that, yeah, um, Breakfast in America is a good album. But I tend to think that in some cases, the hits, the singles off the album tend to carry it along. And maybe maybe people think that it's it's these albums, whatever album it is, is a good album or is the best album, but they're only picking out the hits. Yeah. Right? They don't they're not picking out the deep tracks. They're not they're not looking at the album as a cohesive piece, like a whole piece, right? Um but yeah, no, I completely get what you're saying. I think that album also suffers from um, overplay. A bit, yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Um, but yes, uh, carrying on. Uh, <laughs> my number my number four. Guys, it's mid-afternoon here. Give me a break. Uh, <laughs> um, my number four is Famous Last Words. Okay. Um and Bill and I did not discuss our this on this. Um, again, released in '83. Um, I, I mean, the, the story on this album was was that um, this was going to be their last hurrah. Uh, <clears throat> Roger Hudson and uh, Rick Davies had discussed that this was going to be their last album uh, to do, and it's funny they were both in California about to write the album but they didn't write it together they wrote those songs separate R rick davies wanted to do a more progressive sounding album roger hudson wanted to do more of a pop sounding album and i mean when you hear it i mean like a song like my kind of lady that's not progressive that's like do it sounds like they switched the roles they intended exactly that's exactly what happened um i mean the album is great. I mean, songs like it starts off crazy. Um, where I mean, throughout I gotta tell you though, throughout this album, Roger Hodgson, it sounds like, you know, he's basically saying, Help me out here. I need help here. I'm losing what, you know, I'm kind of losing grip on my my reality here, kind of thing. Like with songs like Crazy and Know Who You Are and um, you know, stuff like that. But he also delivers on the pop. I mean, It's Raining Again is a fantastic song. Um, you know when okay Bonnie, who, which we said was the you know, and and I gotta tell you Bonnie on the end there's a a, a melody that they do, that they play over and over again. It's a it's a repetition that they play. It is the most beautiful melody I have ever heard in my life. Like when I hear that, I stop what I'm doing and I just have to sit there and listen to it. Like I. It it drives me nuts that it's that good, that it's that memorable, that I just have to like listen to it and then I'm doing whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, Bonnie's Bonnie's a good track, even for a B side as of a single. My kind of lady was another single. I don't think it fared as well. Um, you also have um, other tracks like uh, Say Le Bon, and which features Anne and Nancy Wilson on background vocals. And uh, don't leave me now. Uh, or another track. I ju I just kind of feel on this album, you kind of got the feeling, even not knowing what was going on, that they were kind of like running out of steam, a little bit. Like that there was like a um, you knew the end was coming, kind of a thing. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, they did tour for this album. Actually, my sister did see them on this tour at in Toronto. So. Um, that's why this list is so bloody hard because the albums are good overall, but they gotta go somewhere right <laughs> in the list. So, yeah, that's my number four. Mm. Now you're making me want to go hear Bonnie again. I I can hear that hear that, it in my that. head, but yeah, I definitely want to go concentrate on that end piece that you're talking about there. That melody on. on the end, it is so hypnotic and it is so beautiful. That it's like, like I literally tear up when I hear it because it's, um, 
it it speaks to you almost. I mean, I don't know how to, it sounds corny, but I don't know how else to explain it. Um, okay, what's no, your number three? We must carry on, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, my number three, we still seem to be going in reverse chronological order thus far. Okay. Even in the quietest moments. And it was tough between my two and three, just as it was for the four and five. I really, I decided this morning and I could still go back the, the other way because this is a brilliant album. I, I absolutely adore this album. Even I, Fool's Overture. Fool's Overture says yeah. it all. But even with some of the goofy uh, Joker Man, Spider Man lyrics that, that were just good fun, Roger kind of almost like stream of consciousness stuff thrown in amidst all the seriousness of the song yeah um and of course give a little bit well-known hit from the album and it's yeah it's a another another roger song yeah i, I don't mean to downplay rick because rick's written a lot of great songs but yeah i'm i'm a roger guy um, yeah I, I yeah i i tend to be as well i tend to be as well yeah Man, I'm a Roger guy and Pink Floyd. I'm a Roger guy and Super Champ. Not a Roger guy and Queen, though. He's he's three or four. <laughs> That's okay. Very Freddie and Brian are. are definitely the top two there. Yeah, yeah. Very few are for with uh, hate to say that, but <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I digress. I steered the yeah, train. Yeah, it's okay. I mean the, these shows are about going off on tangents, and I mean that's yeah. what we do. Um I didn't bring my tangent CDs out. Uh, okay. All right. Well, we'll do that for next time. <laughs> we'll do that next time. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, do, uh, the cover. I love the cover. I love the, the all of these covers. They yeah. had great album covers through this run. It's Yeah. I mean, and it even has the Fool's Overture. Yeah, I, I wonder... Yeah, if that actually is the music from the song. Yeah, you got to wonder. I mean, but you also get the feeling that they wanted you to know that that what that that album that track, Fool's Overture, um, was the centerpiece of that album, right? Like, was the one to watch out for on that album, right? Because I mean, it clocks, could have been the title. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it clocks in just just under eleven minutes, right? So I mean. Yeah, no. And yeah, that is a fantastic album cover. Uh, that's basically what Alberta looks like up until about May, usually. <laughs> and then it starts so, thawing and coming apart like this as yeah. the ice breaks apart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's true. It's, it's And my number three is even in the quietest moments. I mean... You know, for all the reasons that Bill was saying, I mean, I'm not going to, I don't like to piggyback on your explanations, but I mean, what else can be said? I mean, um, fantastic album. Um, I mean, Give a Little Bit was was obviously the, the main hit from the album. Um, also tracks like Babaji and, um, the, you know, the Tower track. Um, Downstream was another um good track that ended off side one and again fool's overture i mean that's all that can be said fool's overture and that's it okay good night everyone like we're done kind of a thing it is such a sprawling epic piece of music right i mean to have the bells come in and winston churchill like that that speech you know like it's just like unreal it is unreal and a little footnote one of the new shows in canada uh, called W5. Um, uh, they're, they're like a Canadian version of 2020, right? In, in the US. They used Fool's Overture for like, I guess, 10 years as their theme song. Nice. Right. To the, you know, to the intro and the outro. It's like, so yeah, this, this album was a, a massive hit. Um, I mean, there's not much more that can be said. So we're going to move on, actually. <laughs> because, all right. So um, you were number two, Bill. All right. My number two would have 
probably been number four or five a few years ago. Um, I think that's because I ignored side two for so long. I knew side one. Yeah, we know what I'm talking about here. It's <laughs> crisis. What crisis? Another brilliant cover. Yeah. Sunbathing amidst all the desolation and the factory filth and yeah. 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 Brilliant stuff as as yeah. They're really sunbathing on the back. There but you go. uh yeah, as you said, Sister Moonshine, Ain't Nobody But Me, Soapbox Opera, those those I know here in the States, those songs all got a lot of play on mm -hmm, mm -hmm. rock stations for many years. Uh, and I often concentrated on just that side. So I started playing side two more and really delving into it. And especially the final three, just normal day, the meaning and two of us all just really hit me hard. Uh, both musically and lyrically that uh, yeah. I slept on those for too long, but it's kind of cool to uh, be a fan of a band for so many years and to go back and, Oh, wow. How did I miss this? It's yeah. been under nose this whole time. I'd, so I guess it's kind of side two is one of the freshest uh, sides of super tramp music for me here. That definitely helps. Yeah. It does not have the overplay factor. No, that's true. Yeah, this then it really it had no actual hits it had songs that got played on on rock radio but there was no real pop success that i'm aware of that i recall anyway that, yeah no real chart success yeah it's really all all kind of deep cuts so yeah and it's kind of weird it's just, uh when it first came out roger hodgson said that it feel it felt unfinished to him um, that it was not crafted. They weren't given the time to craft it properly because A and M Records, which they were signed to, by the way, um, were on their on their backs to get out a quick follow up to Crime of the Century, which will we will get to soon. Um, but um, yeah, and then and then he said, I think as recently as like in the two thousand uh, uh, twenty tens that. All of a sudden, it's his favorite album. Like, out of the blue. So, I mean, yeah. So, apparently, I'm on, on board with Roger. Apparently, we uh, got on board the crisis train at the same time. Exactly. That's interesting. And it's, <laughs> uh, no, you're right. Two, two great minds think alike, right? <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. So, that's, that's cool. That's cool. Um, <clears throat> my number two is Breakfast in America. Um, uh, you know, this like every most groups have an album in their catalog that's a critical success, the the critics' darling kind of thing, the critics' favorite, and then they also have an album in their catalog that's usually a commercial success. The total opposite. This was Super Tramp's commercial success or breakthrough, basically. And they had been recording how many years from 1970 up to this point till to 79. So, um, yeah, I mean, overplayed or not, you cannot deny that this album, the hits were the hits. I mean, for a reason. I mean, you know, Logical Song, uh, Goodbye Stranger. And again, it took, I think I said this before, it took me years to realize what Goodbye Mary, Goodbye Jane meant, okay? <laughs> I mean, so I now know, okay? But it's... Took a while. Uh, Goodbye Stranger was a, was a fantastic uh, single. Uh, took a long way home. Um, you know, uh, Lord Is It Mine, which was one of my favorites when I was younger, like in my teens, I remember hearing this. I still remember listening to it. Side two, track two, you know, um, which, you know, you've got Roger pining away, asking like, you know, is this is what I have in front of me? Is what I've achieved? Is it mine? You know, like is it going to be taken away from me? Kind of thing. That that's where I take from that track. But you know what? What do I know? I'm nuts, right? Um, and you've got you know other songs like Gone Hollywood, you know, um, uh, and and it, it is so Americana. I mean, like that. You know, you've got the waitress on the front with the tray and the juice with the plate. You know. And then you've got them on the back of the cover. Yeah, there you go. 
you've got them on the cover in a diner yeah. right, being served breakfast. So, I mean, this screams America, you know? Um, and, I mean, that cover is iconic. Yeah. So, you know, um, yeah, that's... <clears throat> And that's my number two. So, you have anything to add to that, or about Breakfast in America, or? I don't think so. I don't think so. It's... <laughs> okay. I mean, I can't really argue. Like I said, it's it's not that I dislike Breakfast in America. It's a great album. It just, again, we got to put them somewhere that based on. Yeah. 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 No, I got you. Okay, um, what's your number one? All right. All that said. My number one is the debut. Okay, psych. We're not even including the debut in this time. Hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. It wouldn't be outtake. Anyway. That's an outtake. Okay. <laughs> my number one. That. <laughs> it's pretty obvious what my number one is. It's yeah. also my all-time favorite album by anyone ever. It's yeah. absolutely perfect. And when I give other albums a perfect ten. I come back later and think, is that as good as Crime of the Century? No, it's not. Maybe I shouldn't have given that album a 10 after all, because this, this is a 10 plus. This this is, I would not change a single word, a single note, nothing. It's It sounds great in any format. Uh, it hits me on many levels lyrically. Um, for the longest time, I just had an eight-track copy of this, which drove me nuts because if, if I remember right, Hide in Your Shell was split in half, and I think Rudy was also. Oh, my That's God. Been... I hate it when they did that. Yeah, the eight yes. tracks. Good riddance, eight tracks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, F off. Go. Oh. <laughs> we don't need them anymore. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, this... I really need to get a new album cover for this. This whole thing is uh, beaten and worn, and but the record yeah. still plays great. It still sounds great. Uh, yeah yeah again they, they it's so well recorded i'm not usually big on sound quality i'm more about the quality of the songs rather than the recording and production but yeah this has it all it has the songs and the recording quality the production quality it's just i can't find a flaw anywhere i so yeah i'm a fanboy I'm, I'm not the guy to go to for a uh, unbiased view of crime of the century mm. It, uh, they never never manage to top it it's it's one of the great things about it is we all know that rick wrote certain songs roger wrote certain songs yeah but on this album they helped each other sing each other's songs and they mm -hmm. they both sang throughout songs i don't know if you can see it real well but white yeah. lettering on lyrics and yellow lettering on the lyrics uh depending let's see yeah, Rick was yellow and Roger sang the white parts. I mean, that was cool that they actually color coded who was singing what on the lyric yeah. sheet. That, yeah. That's and yeah, this is a great lyric sheet to uh, really dive into if you're listening to the album. Mm -hmm. Might be more difficult to see on CD. I haven't got my CD out in a while, but that bright yellow in small print might not work so well. Yeah, yeah, no, it's the. There are some albums that you need the actual vinyl copy. You need the actual full size jacket and lyric sheet and yeah, 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 absolutely. That one and another a night at the opera from Queen is another one that and, and Queen too that you need the full yeah, oh you know the full thing of it. But this is not about Queen. Moving on. Um, I'll go get the Queen prop right here. I don't want to. No, I don't. <laughs> okay. Well, no, if you, if, if you got him, show him. I don't care. It's fine. Um, got him, if you fl got him, flaunt him. Um, yeah, no, I, you have, you have anything else to add or? Uh, I don't think so. I, I could. Uh, yeah. I did. I was just wondering if I cut you off. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, go ahead. I'm, I'm curious to hear what you have to say about the album. Um, well, Just this. This is my number one album on my list. And I'm going to get emotional, but I'll try not to. Um, this, for me, has to be the best album of Supertramp that I have ever heard. 
period. Um, I've known of it since I was a kid. I had a neighbor two doors down. We lived in a we lived in a cul-de-sac like I live in now. And our neighbor, two doors down, Eddie Guerra, loved Queen, loved Zeppelin, loved Super Tramp, loved Kiss, loved all those stuff, all those bands. I would hear, sitting outside in the summer, I would hear him playing this album, whether it was in his living room or his basement, it was coming out through the through the windows. You would hear it out in the street while you were playing hockey or whatever, right? Or baseball. You would listen, you would hear this in the neighborhood. This album sonically is the best album I have ever heard, hands down. The drums are huge, but clean and crisp. The guitars are textured and clean and beautiful and like just full and rich. Um even on the intro of school, you know, you have that slow bit that comes in and you hear the harmonica. It is a fantastic sounding album from the get-go. There is not one sleeper track on you. You've got School, Lay Well Right, Hide in Your Shell, Asylum, Side 2, Dreamer, um, now I'm going to get Rudy, if everyone was listening, uh, title track. The title track, when I listen to it, I cry my eyes out because it's basically talking about, I'm, this is my interpretation, it's basically talking about people in governments or whoever is in charge losing the plot of what they were meant to do or what they started out to do. And then when you start at that middle section when the piano comes in, right? Just that the piano. And then the band starts to come in again on the outro, like from the middle to the outro. I bawl my eyes out. I bawl my eyes out every single time. You can just, I, and I'm sorry for the tangent. That's my show. Sorry. Um, you can just, in my mind, I can, I can just see them on stage and a single spotlight is on, um, Rick Davies, and he's at the piano, at the at a grand piano, playing that piano part as the band kicks in. And then they all come in and join him on the outro. It is just beautiful. And it, it's a master class. This whole album is a master class and a master stroke of how an album should be done and put together. You know, Trident Studios, where it was recorded, has long been touted as having... Um, a thin drum sound, like very thin drums, not much uh, of a of a heavy drum sound in terms of the way the way the, the the way the mics are placed in the studio. I don't know what the hell they did, but there is not one one flaw on this album with regards to engineering and and arranging and producing. So for me, this is my number one album, hands down. And I'll get off my soapbox right now. So I think it's unanimous. <laughs> it, it says a lot that uh, when Paris was released, that seven of the eight songs from this album were on there more than their current huge hit album. I mean, yeah, none of the other albums had as many as Crime on Redone Live on Paris. So that speaks to what the band thought about it also. Yeah, I, I obviously I think, they knew it was good. So. Yeah, I think that they looked at that as their um their statement there and that was going to carry them throughout their career. So yeah. But yeah, I mean I don't know what else can be said. I mean, I you know I, sort of me falling out of my wheelchair trying to talk trying, trying to say how good this album is, you know. <laughs> But we, you know, we discussed it. No dramatic efforts on the on the show. So, um, but um, yeah, that's that is our five, our list of five, uh, top five Super Tramp albums from nineteen seventy four to nineteen eighty three. Um, and May I throw in a go ahead a quick uh, sorry go ahead. I just want to give an honorable mention to the the Super Tramp album 
and the Roger Hodgson album that were the follow-ups to Famous Last Words after they split apart. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. Both of these albums are anybody who's a Super Tramp fan who loves those classic albums. These are both worth acquiring. They're both oh. quite good in their own ways. Okay. And if you could just blend the best from both, you'd have them one final true Super Tramp album. So that's all. Okay. I'm say. Well, okay. No, that's good. That's good. I have, I do have Brother Way You Bound. Um, and, and in fact, I was going to ask you a question, but I'll, I'll just put this in first. Um, Brother Way You Bound dates back to Famous Last Words. Um, and it started out as a 10 minute piece. It grew. Uh, it grew. Yeah. I mean, again, um, I don't know if I mentioned this at the top of the show. Uh, Rick Davies wanted to do the more progressive stuff, which I think I did say that. Yeah. And he wanted Brother Where You Bound to be the centerpiece of the. That, that makes more sense than, than what album. ended up. In, yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, um, they, they got into a disagreement about it. And I guess, you know, I mean, at this point, at that point, you knew, they knew that this was it. Like they were not going to. They were not going to uh, do another album together in that configuration. And to my recollection, and because I'm old, guys, you know, I don't remember too much. Um, but Bill's older than me, not by much, but he is. Uh, and then, but uh, I still love you, Bill. I'm sorry. But um, um, I don't believe that they've ever reunited for like a one off concert or like a thing like, at all. So. No. I think uh, Doogie Thompson, I believe, uh, actually has done some shows with Roger, if I remember right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Don't okay. quote me on that. Okay. If I'm right, it was me. If I'm wrong, it wasn't me. <laughs> it was nobody me. but me going to lie. There you, you go. There you go. If it was, <laughs> if he's wrong, it was me. I told him about that. Okay, so he can blame me. So yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is too funny. Um, Excuse me. So yeah, um, these are our top five uh, Super Tramp albums from seventy four to eighty three. Uh, down below, down there, let us know what you think. Do you like Super Tramp? Do you hate them? Do you think that they're you know that they're old dinosaurs that they should have quit after Roger Hodgson left the band? Should they have continued? You know, there's plenty of places we can go with this. So um, I we will bid you adieu. But we will be coming back with uh, at least two more episodes, probably even three more episodes um, with Mr. Bill Schuster. Um, but for now, I am your host, Armando Venditti. So, guys, please take care of yourselves and one another. And click like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep yourselves on top of any new content that I've got coming up. I should quickly mention that I was, in, I was talking to or chatting with Ryan Gavalier. And today, and he's coming back on the show, we're going to be taping a show of uh, an episode of uh, Misguided or Misunderstood, and we're tackling Tusk from Fleetwood Mac. That's going to be doing happening on Monday. So um, again, for, uh, for Mr. Bill Schuster, I am Armando Venditti signing off, and we will see you soon. Bye for now.